idea of a women's hospital was not something which was very prevalent in chennai before uh, people you know go to the hospitals to get their treatment done but nothing was women centric so once we started this place we had an idea an idea so that you know only women will be treated at our place the reason is because i always feel women should be given that little bit of special attention since we are gynecologists we have a couple of departments with us so everything concerning gynecology and women related issues we are able to take care in this hospital this whole concept was not started by me uh, i had this idea from my boss in mumbai i went to dr rakesh sinha so i learned from him on how to conceptualize this and how to make it a reality and uh, i wanted to do the same thing in chennai so then i started this in 2016 and ever since then we had no nothing looking back after that so i was always inspired from my father so my father was always very academic and i also thought i should be like him try to learn as much as possible because as a doctor there's never a time when you can say you have learned everything every time there is always something new to learn so i always like to keep myself updated and ever since i finished my post graduation i always had the hunger to learn more and more so i did my training in laparoscopy and after that i did my training in infertility after which again i did my training in cosmetic gynecology and uh, you know this is where we are today uh, how do we define infertility when we have to look at infertility it is nothing but one year of unprotected intercourse and if the patients are the male and the female they are unable to conceive we call them as infertile and someone who is more than 36 years this one year becomes 6 months so if you are trying for 6 months without a child uh, that is the time they have they are considered as infertile and then they have to come in for treatment when you're looking at male and female infertility they both obviously in different aspects we look at so in the male infertility we only look at one aspect what we need which is the sperm count so the sperm count actually has been reducing for a very long period of time so in the 1950s a sperm count which is around 50 million was normal so today in 2019 15 million is normal So from 50 million to 15 million there's a big transition which means the normal sperm count itself in a generation is coming down and for female infertility uh, when we look at it usually for females there are only three things what we are looking at one whether the ovary is normal ovaries is where the eggs are produced and whether the tube is normal that is where the eggs are going through the uh, ovaries from the ovaries into the uterus and whether the uterus is normal so we have several tests to do that one we have uh, we look at their uh, tube test to make sure whether both the tubes are normal it is called as a histosalpingography uh, then we have another test which is called as the uh, uh, you know transvaginal ultrasound to make sure whether the uterus is normal whether there are any fibroids whether there is any cysts which are there and uh, then we also have a look at their hormone profiles to make sure the eggs are being released on time and we all know now pcod is something which is a hot topic you know everyone is talking about pcod because you know it is also very prevalent almost one in every three women are having pcod today i think it has to come down to diet when you look at it uh, over the past few decades like how our ancestors used to eat or not only ancestors our three generations before they never used to go outside and eat now if you look at it every day you see everyone only going and eating outside dinner time no one cooks home at, i mean uh, cooks food at home they all go outside and eat so it's all what we eat we are what we eat so the more you eat outside the more uh, you know chemicals come into your body the more chances of you to have degenerated eggs degenerated sperm and higher chances of infertility and also the environment as such you know the amount of pollution as you said stress so everything plays a part in this
Currently, we also are doing these specific and more uh, uh, specialized procedures called as the cosmetic gynecology, which I don't think anyone else is doing it. So we have the thing called as the femilift alma lasers, where basically without doing any procedures, sometimes usually what happens a little bit older women, no, when they cough or when they sneeze or they do some kind of activity, they have a little bit of urine leakage. So without doing any surgery at all, we just do this Alma laser treatment and the patient is completely relieved of all these symptoms. So what we are planning to do, we are planning, we are planning to have like satellite centers where we do an OP in a couple of places. But finally everyone gets fed into this uh, center because you know that is the only way we are actually able to progress in this particular thing. Because having two, three different centers, uh, you will not be in a position to give that kind of responsibility to someone else because you know it is something which I think it's a personal touch which the patient needs from you. And that personal touch only you can give you know. You cannot expect someone else to do, do the same thing. Yeah.